Thank you very much, Santos. Um, honestly, everything I wanted to exhort on you touched on <laughs> Philippians 2, 14 in contrast to Exodus, Exodus uh, 10, 23. What that darkness and the light there means for us today. So thank you so much. Uh, as Santos was saying earlier, um, I also have received a lot of messages uh, from you know emails and texts, WhatsApp, Psalm 91. Uh, I don't know that I've received more messages on WhatsApp more than I have in the last month, especially with all that has been going on now. I received one the other day with a picture of, I think Moses or someone putting the blood on the dove post and the person put said there, uh, you know, as Jesus, the blood covered and the blood of Jesus also will cover our homes and our families. Uh, and they, you know, they signed it off IGN in Jesus' name. I think that means. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, all these messages going around, uh, are these folks who have walked with the Lord before all this began? Or is fear what is driving each one? To quote all these verses, Psalm 91, whatever scripture you want to you want to mention. But I want to read a verse in Psalm 50. Just for you and I, uh, we who... Psalm 50, verse uh, 16 and 17. The point I want to make this morning is this. If you had not taken God's word seriously before the coronavirus hit, just rush in to find a wonderful verse in the Bible thinking that will cover you and protect you is a massive deception. In Psalm 50, verse 16 and 17, God says to the wicked, what do you have to do declaring my statutes? Or what sh why do you take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you've hated instruction and you've cast my words behind you. And so my encouragement to us, brothers and sisters, God's word is wonderful. We find tremendous comfort in scripture. I have been the last few weeks, but it means nothing if before now, I never took time to know it and obey it. Reading the, the scriptures now is just in addition to what has been done before. But simply to rush to find verses with, with all that is happening, supposing that will help you, is, is a deception. Please take God's word to heart. Even if you have not in the past, you can take this opportunity maybe to start. But don't deceive yourself thinking, I, I'll just read the Bible now uh, so that God may protect me. Uh, with what is going on now. now. Uh, Psalm 91, Santos was saying earlier, I, I think people have been passing it around because of that word plague. Uh, let me give you a verse, verse that has helped me. Uh, in Revelation 16, 9, it describes God as the one who has the power over the plagues. So if you're a child of God, there's nothing to be afraid. God is still in control, even over all that is happening right now. God is in charge. And one last verse that has also been of comfort to me. So Santa was looking at contrasting the tent, the Israelites, Goshen versus the Egyptians. That what was happening between those two camps. For you as a child of God, and for me, the Lord says this to me recently. While all this is happening, what should be happening in my home, in my tent, in my home, in our, in our church? Psalm 118 verse 15 says this. This must be the case. Again, it's a wonderful verse. You can read it and say it must be. But if you have not been walking with God all this time before this thing happened, I don't know. Is this, is this true in your own home, in your own tent? Psalm 118 verse 15 says, There must be the voice of rejoicing and salvation in the tent of the righteous because the right hand of the Lord has done wonderfully. I've read that verse, and I wasn't even searching for it when I saw it. I was reading just Psalm 18 for whatever reason, but my, high, my eyes hit that verse, and the Lord says, this must be your testimony in this hour. In your home, that light that we heard of in Exodus 10, 23, that must be shining, no murmuring, no complaining as we heard. And in addition to that, there must actually be rejoicing in our hearts, not because of all that is happening, but because Jesus is in our midst. Philippians 4, um, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We rejoice because Jesus is with us. 
we may be sick. Some of us have fallen sick, cold, virus, whatever it might be. Uh, but we rejoice because the hand of the Lord has done valiantly. I've tested myself with Psalm 118 and 15 the last few weeks. I want it to be so every day. And if it's not, let us go to the Lord to help us. Uh, we must be rejoicing in our camps, in our homes. We're all stuck at home now, all of us. So it's a good time to do test this out. Perfect time to test it. When all the children are in the house, you and your wife are home, you can go out. You can go in the yard and throw football, but you're back in again. What else to do? They must be rejoicing all the time. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Santosh. Thank you, brothers, uh, for sharing. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about um, temptation, um, especially as it relates, well, in the context of, of uh, these days in which we live, the temptation uh, most um, coming upon us, I believe, is fear uh, when, when God, when Jesus multiple times told us not to fear. Um, in Psalm 18, Psalm 18, 4, Verse four through six um, said, "The course of death encompassed me, and the torrents of ungodliness terrified me. The course of Sheol surrounded me; the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of His temple, and my cry for help before Him came into His ears." And in verse four, uh, something I had never seen until recently, the Lord talked about. Uh, or David is talking about the torrents of ungodliness, or torrents, or where you get, or where you get torrential rains or floods from. It's something that is not ordinary. It's something that is relentless, or something that is um, unmerciful. That it comes in waves, and it's that those waves are unmerciful. I, I, yesterday, I was watching uh, people talk about avalanches and people. Uh, testimonies about being caught in avalanches and stuff like that. And one thing that I noticed was that how avalanches are unrelenting. They're unmerciful. That whatever is in its path is going to uh, be taken down. But in our lives and in the context of, of days in which we live, it's fear. Uh, but this could be anything that I take to my heart that when those torrents of ungodliness, tor torrents of fear or anxiety or lust or whatever the sin may be or whatever that temptation is it comes in uh but the bible uh david said in verse six in my distress i called upon the lord and cried to my god for help and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry for help before him came into my ears and if you jump down to verse 16 um uh, for the sake of time but if you you can read all the way down to 16 talks about how how it moves God when you seek him call out to him for for help as we we hear so many times that God is on our side against the devil against these torrents of ungodliness uh, that are in our lives and it tells about how God is moved uh, when we cry out to him and in verse 16 he said and he sent from on high he took me and he drew me out of many waters he delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Uh, and it shows how God helps us uh, and he's there to help us when those things come in our lives that are overwhelming that are uh, relenting, unmerciful. It's just like you can't, uh, you, you, you uh, quote a scripture as, as Olu was saying, you find the perfect scripture and you try to quote it over and over again, but seem like sometimes it's still, that thing is just forceful and it's coming 
uh, unrelenting. But if we go to the God of the scriptures, as John 5 talks about, that even the Pharisees knew scriptures. They knew exactly when to quote the scriptures, at what time, the perfect time to say it. This is, you know, even in Bibles, they have uh, in a time of distress, they have a bunch of uh, uh, verses to go to when you're feeling sad or when you're feeling lonely. Um, but beyond that, it is going to the God of the Bible. As he said, I believe it's in John 5, he said that you uh, seek the scriptures in, uh, for in them you think you have eternal life. You think in just reading and quoting the scriptures you have eternal life. But you didn't come to me, the God of the scriptures, uh, the, the, the person of whom the scriptures talks about. And that's what David did. He cried out to the Lord in his distress. Uh, and the Bible said that the Lord heard him. Uh, in Psalm 60 um, is another verse. Um, King James Version reads a little bit different. Um, in verse... Um, actually, it's uh, Psalm... Uh, I believe it's 60. I'm sorry, 61. Sorry. Uh, 61. Hear my cry, O God. Give heed to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to thee when my heart is faint. Um, the uh, King James Version says, when my heart is overwhelmed, it said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Um, and once we put G. Uh, we put Jesus and bring him into our our situation, those temptations that come. Um, and as I said before, as it now, it could be fear um, and anxiety. Um, the Lord is our stay. Uh, and we have an example in Jesus Christ. Um, when he didn't give in to um, anxiety, he didn't give in to uh, fear. Uh, and, it, and it relates to going to uh, the cross. Uh, and that is something that uh, that I uh, has become life to me is that when I go to the cross, uh, when I die to these temptations, these things that come, uh, the easiest thing is for me is to just give in and give in to the sin, give in to the temptation. Um, but God is there to help us. I used to look at the cross as me here cross is here god is on the other side of the cross so in order for me to get to god and to get to that resurrection life i have to go through the cross and then i finally meet god and find god there uh, but i saw some recently uh the scripture uh came fresh to me in john 12 john 12 and 27. We know in 24, it talks about the cross. Um, and the earlier they said they wanted to see Jesus. And this is how you see Jesus. Unless you fall, unless a ground of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. For if it dies, it bears much fruit. If he who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. It's talking about the cross. Um, and in verse 27, he gave us an example. He said, now my soul has become troubled. His soul was troubled, but before it turned into anxiety, before it turned into fear, before it turned into sin, he immediately said, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then it was came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Even before the cross and something that in my life that those things that come, relenting things that seem to come or try to paralyze me or try to uh, give me anxiety or try to, to make me sin or those temptations to sin, uh, those, those torrents of ungodliness. Uh, I say, God, you're on my side. You're on this side of the cross. That it's not me trying to get through somehow and then or some psychological trick to get myself to take up the cross. And then I get res a resurrection life. 
Uh, but God, I want you to, before I go to the cross, glorify your name. You're glorified in me going to the cross and me taking up the cross and uh, me having the desire to walk this way of the cross. Glorify your name. And once God is there, and as we know in Romans 8, he's there to help us uh, that um, that if we, through the spirit, uh, do mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, we shall live. And that is something that has helped me tremendously that even in this these times where there is a temptation to to be fearful um, and later, you know, even if there wasn't uh, the virus going around, whatever the sin is, whatever the temptation is, God is there to help us. And if I take up the cross, when those things come, I say, glorify your name, Father. Uh, I want you to be glorified in me taking up the cross. And, and that's when. I, he enables me to take up the cross. It's amazing that he enables me to take up the cross. And then he gives me resurrection life for taking up the cross. Uh, and it's just uh, a wonderful thing. And um, in this time of fear, we can remember that that as we watch those news programs and um, they uh, almost almost fear mongering seems to be where um, they use certain language that that incites panic. Um, it's not necessarily just news, but it sometimes things are are editorialized, as they say, where it gives it. Um, um, I don't. It may be as bad as it sounds. I don't know. But as we, as people of God, we have a God who helps us, a God who is here to help us when those things come in like a flood. Uh, Isaiah fifty nine says, "When enemy comes in like a flood, the 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 spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard or a banner against them, a banner saying that." That person belongs to me. Uh, he, he's taken, as we were hearing, as I heard yesterday uh, from the elders of NCC, I've talked about the, the married land, that I'm married. I I belong to God. There's a banner over me that says I belong to God. And as we heard earlier, not away from the physical things, but from my soul, my, my uh, spirit being contaminated.